is imperfect. British Prime Minister David Cameron, already facing the defection of six cabinet members, came face to face with London's Mayor Boris Johnson. That's my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, to explain to the House and, and to the country in exactly what way this deal returns sovereignty over any field of lawmaking to these Houses of Parliament. Just told right. you. This deal brings back some welfare powers. It brings back some immigration powers. Cameron has four months to argue his case. If he can't convince Britain to stay in the European Union, other countries could follow, meaning the mere existence of the EU is in doubt. Johnson is the highest profile politician to back the campaign for Britain's departure. Because I want a better deal for the people of this country. Skeptics like Johnson doubt the UK can gain any rights back from the EU. The British have debated the merits of EU membership for years, but tensions are rising as the ongoing migrant crisis stretches the limits of a slow growth and sometimes no growth Europe. Today, tensions rose some more as the British pound suffered its biggest single day drop in almost six years. It is important that uh, the certainty of continued job creation, that this certainty can continue. I think it's also a message for Europe. And I do believe that were the UK to leave, uh, the challenge for the European Union uh, would be immense. Financial insiders are pointing to business leaders. About half the CEOs of FTSE 100 companies, that's the UK signature stock index, who are supporting Cameron. The top execs at Royal Dutch Shell and GlaxoSmithKline are among those expected to sign a letter saying a departure from the European Union could put Britain's economy at risk. Britain's political fishers echo the populist outcry here. And now it appears Wall Street is getting involved too. Goldman Sachs has reportedly given more than $700,000 to a group called Britain Stronger in Europe. Seema Modi for Nightly Business Reports.